We are at the Teufelfontein World Heritage Site for the annual Youth Environmental Summit, also known as the YES. The YES coincides with the annual Biodiversity Day under the theme of 25 years of action in biodiversity. The YES is hosted by Gobobik Research and Training Centre and the aim of the program is to give practical scientific background to grade 11 learners throughout Namibia. Every year we divide the learners into three groups where they do different research projects. This year we have three projects, which is our first one, Valvitia project that looks at the biodiversity around this very unique plant. Our second one is looking at three habitats, which is our rocky outcrops, our riverbed, as well as our open plains to compare the type and diversity of plants and animals found within these regions. And our last group has a social aspect added that looks at the uses of the environment by the local community and the sustainability thereof. Three days ago, we got to Fontaine. We were divided into groups, and in my group, we are researching Valvichia. So everybody take a close look at these. Seeing it for the first time, I was so excited. And the fact that you can differentiate with your eyes, whether it's a male or female, makes it even more interesting. It's really old, like the stems. You can, by looking at the stems, you can tell whether it is old or not and what I like most about it is that some of the leaves or the plant itself has become a microhabitat for valvicia bugs and ants and lizards as well. Oh I saw a male. It's the, the first, first male, male out, yeah, of, like out of a whole day. Out of ten, ten. valvichas we've seen. Oh BM1 wait the diameter what is it? I think the fish yeah I hope it's th uh, it's not thirty. I was hoping. Oh, well, it's thirty. <laughs> Are you guys sure you said two hundred Velvichas? I think so. You just said until we can't find any more. So, female. Yes. Yes. So it's many it's, it's really funny because mm -hmm. we were saying that the males grow males. more yeah. than females, yeah. but now we're just being proven wrong <laughs> in your face. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought there were more males. I can see that the stem here is really big, so meaning it's really old. And the leaves, the leaves are long. And we know that the velvicia only grows one centimeter each month, ne? Yeah. Yeah. So but if we crazy. had to measure this, it could be... But then it could be that the leaves have been eaten. Yeah. They, could have, they were probably longer. Now, like, they moved their chlorophyll in. Since you want to measure the leaves? No, up. just to see. Just... And the seeds are still sprouting. Yeah, they're still, mm. they're still busy. Yeah. So this is six so months, just one. if I had to guess. It's still fresh. It still hasn't dispersed its seeds yet. I'm here to learn more on biodiversity and the different varieties of animal species as well as plants and I'm part of the biodiversity group of course. <laughs> we have a hypothesis to start off with. So we thought that all the plants and animals in each habitat differ from one another and of course they have a relation therefore they're in that specific habitat. So we're checking at three different ones. That's the rocky outcross the savannah and of course the riverbed. So in each habitat we put on quadrants. This is part of random sampling of course. We check their species level. We check what their names are, why are they there. So we also check like the relationships. Why is this certain plant there? And by checking the number of animals or plants in a specific area, we could check the abundance and which is more dominant. 
that's obviously going to come in our analysis, the results. Now what's the speedo's name? What is the speedo? Oh, this is the blister beetle. Blister beetle. The youth should become more engaged in nature and things in relation to that. Because this is all we have, this is where we live. So we should conserve it, we should be aware of it. My title of the group is the use of natural resources in the Tulifontaine environment. The main aim of the group is to classify and identify the natural resources in the community and how they use them. And what we did today is we went out to the different kinds of communities in the area and interviewed them about the natural resources in the environment and how they make use of them and if they're using it sustainably or not. I Why? <laughs> oh, <laughs> The group found out that the local Damara people make use of many natural resources such as Mopane, uh, elephant dung and hudia, just to mention a few. And it appeared that these uh, local people really use these resources sustainably. It was very important for the group to visit the living museum because it offered them the opportunity to actually see what the local people really use and also you know it gave them an opportunity to get to know what the elders used to use back in the days
all the projects that the Youth Environmental Summit learners were doing uh, throughout the two weeks that they've been here are all centered around, the, around this day, which is celebrating 25 years of action on biodiversity. Uh, it's very important for young learners to understand why it's important to celebrate this day. Namibia is a signatory of the Convention of Biological Diversity, and this is the 25th year that we've been part of that convention, and that is a milestone. And the learners showcase the work that they've been doing as part of that program, and they showcase it to very important people such as the Minister of Environment and Tourism, the Mayor of the town, and this year there was also the representative of the ambassador from the German embassy. Now that can only show how important this day is. This is a very important milestone for us. We want the young people to get involved in the environmental education because um, they need to understand uh, nature. Once they understand nature, they get passionate about uh, nature conservation. Every element in the ecosystem matters. And if they capture that um, concept, then they will be good environmentalists. So the Youth Environmental Summit is not only about teaching them about science. Of course, not all of them are going to be scientists. But it's very important to understand that they are grade 11 learners and the one very critical part that we are teaching them is environmental awareness. But also, we also teach them as, as career guidance. For those who want to be scientists, we'll see how it is to be a scientist, how it is to be in the field, how it is to collect data and be a scientist. We also teach them how to think critically. For example, when they are confronted with a problem in their lives, we all use the same skills. We use the same methods to confront a problem. We're also teaching them group uh, dynamic skills. How is it to work in a group? How important it is to work with other people because they are going to work with people in the future. We're also taking them to places. Some of these learners have never been to, uh, to Damaraland, for example. They've never seen the beaches. The Youth Environmental Summit it's a very unique summit in Namibia. It's the only one of its kind. And this is a very enriching experience that these learners are taking away from here to use it in their future careers.